hello so um it's the windiest day ever here um the the wind is at uh, maximum speeds of 90 miles an hour um which is uh creating a bit of an atmosphere um and it's meant that we can't go outside so i haven't been able to go to the salon today um the elemental locks salon so i thought i'd make a little video for you to show you um one of the stitches that i use um most commonly when i'm making dreadlock extensions um i have uh managed to witter down my uh technique into about um six to eight different stitches um that i'll use for different things um and i use different hooks for different things and um is to get different um, results and on different hair types and things like that. Um, so I go into more detail on that in my um, professional optician training course. But um, today I wanted to show you the, the main stitch. This is the first one that I teach people on the course. Um, and as I say to them, this you can just do locks from scratch with this stitch alone. Um, I like to use other stitches as well just to sort of like finesse the the result and to get it like super tight and super neat but um this is like uh, the number one like basic stitch that i feel like everyone can use um so i'm going to show you a close-up of um myself making some synthetic extensions using this stitch today and then you can um tell me what you think um, it's called basket stitch. So uh, here we go. Okay, so here is my temporary work surface. Um, this is not my normal work surface. This is not my normal clamp, but um, all my equipment is at the shop and going to the shop right now would be pretty dangerous with the uh, crazy storm that we're in the middle of. So um, here's, here's what I've got to work with. Um, so to start your basket stitch, you need to, this is a pre-prepared, pre-backcombed section of synthetic hair, Kinecolon. Um, I'm going to hold the tension with my right hand. I'm right-handed. Hold the tension with my right hand. And then I'm going to pinch on this side and wrap around. And this is how I start every, everything from maintenance to um, extension making. So I'm going to wrap all that loose hair over to the left side and just secure it like that. Okay, this, check out this hand position. So I'm going to hold with my, uh, it's almost like you hold it with a fist like this. You start with a fist and then just let these fingers go so that what happens is that you've got, you're holding the tension, but you can, you have these fingers free to do whatever you want with. So you can, you can re-sweep all of that loose hair over to the left-hand side whilst keeping the tension with those fingers. And it's a really, it, it looks weird, but it's actually a very relaxed hand position. So I really um, encourage you to give that a go. And, and that's an alternative to doing this, basically. I see a lot of people doing this and like that puts a, quite a lot of stress on this, uh, on this uh, joint here um, and can cause like, um, repetitive strain injury later on down the line. Anyway, sorry, digress. Um, so pinch and wrap. That's what we're doing. So the place your thumb on the black pad of your hook, which means that the hook part is facing this way. Um, and you kind of hold it like a pen. I don't know how you hold your pen, but that's how I hold my pen. Um, and then, so the hook is going to go, going to be inserted vertically down the right side of your dread. So it's only like literally that much. So it's not going through the middle or anything. It's just going straight down. And then it's gonna come underneath, pull out a little thread like that, push so that the thread is, the, uh, the stitch is pushed all the way to the thicker part of your hook there. Turn it over so the hook's facing down. And then you're basically scratching the surface like that and then push again so we can go on back underneath. So it's underneath, over the top, underneath, over the top. That comes over the top, 
you try and keep hold, hold the the tension so you keep the stitch push it so that it's so that the stitch is collected onto the hook like that and then underneath so you need to make sure that the hook is facing down on top and up underneath and when it's facing down it wants to be sort of dragging the loose hair along your index finger like that and when it goes underneath it's going to be pulling the loose hair along the pad of your thumb over the top underneath and every now and again you can stop to human hair is not gonna sort of snap like that but this is what I've got to work with today underneath over the top underneath and it doesn't matter if you do drop the stitch every now and again because what you'll do is you'll just re-wrap that over to that side And you can do a few stitches on, on over the top of each other just to, for, to get it nice and secure. But the good thing about this stitch is that you can travel down with it as well. So if you wanted to go fast, you could go. I don't know if you can hear that, but like the trees are just like banging against my house right now. It's like pretty scary. So hopefully you can see that coming together. It's like not as easy to see on this hair, but what you end up with is a um, sort of a wrappy sort of texture down this side and then a stitchy texture down this side. It's really actually quite hard to see, but I don't know if you can see it's like a almost like a sewing machine has gone down that side and then a more of a smooth wrap on the other side but what you're doing this is basically creating a cage of hair around the outside of the extension so the hook is not going through the middle at all um, which uh, means that you shouldn't be putting too much pressure or like a uh, strain or um, on the on the hook itself because if you're using a 0.5 they're really really quite tiny these hooks if you can see that um, so the so this part when you put so you go underneath pull your little go underneath pull your little stitch out like that this is where you don't want to just pull it towards you because by doing that you're going to bend your hook backwards and possibly even snap it. So you want to push through to the thick part and go over the top. And really it should be putting no pressure at all on the, on the hook itself. And once you pick up some speed, you can use it to this is, this is the stitch that I use to basically start everything off, like locks from scratch. Like it's got, um, it's real easy to like go quite fast with this one. Um, but in my opinion, you would need to then tighten up any, any spaces or um, just go like, because I like them neat. I like them really like, check out my work on Instagram and you'll see how, how, neat and uniform i like them i like them to be so um but i think this is like perfectly adequate if you just wanted to see i'm going over the same bit again that i went over last time so like you can do that um but like that's perfectly fine like texture that would start them off that will hold um so yeah i hope hopefully that's um been useful for you So what do you think of the basket stitch? 
Um, I think it's super useful um, and it's like the number one stitch that I would like I use um, so let me know how it goes um, if you find yourself needing any crochet hooks or um, loctician supplies um, including hair extensions um, I sell all of that on my website on elementallocks.co.uk and um, also on there if you feel like you would like to learn more with me um, I have information about my training courses on there as well so uh, there is the uh, Jupiter level professional loctician course on my website um, that's three days in the classroom with me three whole days which flies by trust me um, and then unlimited mentorship after that so it's everything that you need to know to um, to start a dreadloctician business, to make your extensions, maintenance, removal, colouring hair extensions, what hair extensions to use, what tools to use, um, literally everything you can think of. Um, and then the third day is all about your your business startup, how to start up, how to you know be self-employed. Um, you know, talk about taxes, talk about marketing, talk about you know how to how to bring in customers everything but it's not really three days is not really enough time to learn all of that sort of thing so we have a, a whatsapp group um where like any time that you you need any help you just post on there and you've got me and then all of the alumni from previous previous classes to to chat to when you've got a problem so um it's pretty good value um check it out i'll put the link below um please like and subscribe i'm gonna try and make some more videos soon so um sorry it's been like years since my last one but um thank you for all your positive feedback so far if you've got any questions please let me know i'm here for you thank you very much for watching bye